What's up my friends, welcome back! Have you ever played a game on a PC that is running so slow that all the guys in the chat are telling you that you're playing on a microwave? Well don't worry, because now you can do that! Prepare a pizza, more like playing some Mortal Kombat 4! So let's see how to make this project! This is my new gaming retro console microwave. This runs on a Raspberry Pi. It has an LCD driver and an LCD screen. On an SD card I flashed a retro Pi which is a platform used for old gaming emulators. Then I've copied all sorts of ROMs for different games. With this same setup you could just change the SD card and you could run Ubuntu, just as you would do on a PC. With that you could go online, code in Python or even play Minecraft. It has a Wi-Fi connection. You could add a keyboard and a mouse and it also has a USB Xbox controller like this one. On this setup you could play games from all kinds of old consoles, such as the Atari, the Game Boy, the Mame, Nintendo, Playstation and much more. So let's see what we need to build this project and how to build it. I will provide everything that you need in the video description, so make sure that you check that as well. Before we start make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell in order to see my future videos. Also thanks to all my patrons for the support. So let's get started. Get professional made PCBs from GLC PCB for very low prices. And now the good news is that the price is the same for any color of the solder mask. The finish quality is very good, the precision as well and good delivery time. For just $2 you can get 10 PCBs of 10 by 10 cm of any color now. You have green, red, yellow, white, blue and black options to choose from. So upload your files to GLC PCB and order the PCBs now and take advantage of this offer. What's up my friends, welcome back. Let's first see what we need for this project. We need a Raspberry Pi. I have the Raspberry Pi 3. It has all that we need. USB ports, an HDMI port to connect the LCD screen, a Wi-Fi connection, the SD card reader and also the audio output jack. It also has an Ethernet input connector for better internet connection. Next we need this LCD driver that will be connected to the Raspberry Pi using an HDMI cable and then we can connect the LCD pins to this driver. I have this 10 inches LCD display which was one of the expensive parts of this project. You could find a smaller one or a bigger one if you want. To supply everything I will use this small 5 volts power supply since all the electronics except the LCD could run at this voltage. For the LCD you will need a supply of 12 volts as well. This kind of power supplies are very cheap. Ok so for sound I will use this very low quality audio amplifier. If you want better sound, consider a better amplifier as well. We also need some speakers and an HDMI cable. As for the smaller parts we need a high speed micro SD card and an adapter to connect it to the PC. We also need some sort of USB joystick controller. I bought this Xbox copy of a controller for very cheap. You might want to consider a simple keyboard and a mouse as well, in case that you need to insert some password later. For better internet connection without cable, I bought this Wi-Fi antenna as well. So this is pretty much all that we need for this project. See the full part list below in order to see all the other small parts such as the switches and connectors. So this is the schematic that I will use for this project. Before I mount it inside of the metal case of the microwave, I first make the circuit outside and give it a test. I connect everything to everything. The HDMI cable to the LCD driver. Then the driver to the LCD. I connect power to both the Raspberry Pi at 5 volts and the LCD module with 12 volts and I plug all the USB connectors such as the joystick, the small keyboard, the Wi-Fi antenna and the mouse. 
Now everything should work, but we have no platform running on the Raspberry Pi. For that we take the SD card. My card is of 32GB. Insert the SD card into the USB adapter and make sure that you format it to be empty. Now go below this video and download the Etcher software and the RetroPie zip file. If you are using a Raspberry Pi 3, select that one here on the download page for the RetroPie. Extract this zip file and you will get an image file. Now you have to install the Etcher on your PC and insert the SD card. Open Etcher. Now click here and select the RetroPie image file that you have just downloaded and extracted. Select the SD card drive and then you can flash the image. When this is done just remove the SD card and plug it into the Raspberry Pi but without the power. Now you can plug the power and the RetroPie platform will start running. The first thing you will get it will ask you to define the buttons of your controller. Just press those buttons for start, for up, down, left, right and so on. If you don't have one of the buttons, just keep long press on the start button to skip it. So now we are ready, but we have no games. So here's what you have to do to add games to this console. To download games I prefer this website, ROM Hustler. Search for any game. For example Mortal Kombat 4. Have in mind that this is a game for Nintendo 64, because that will be important later. Download this file and extract it, and you will end up with this file in an x64 extension. Now back to the Raspberry Pi. Press the start button and go to Wi-Fi, and search for your router. If not, just connect to the router using the Ethernet cable. But it must be the same internet router as your PC that you're using, so we have the same network. In my case I use Wi-Fi. I select the Wi-Fi name and I add the password, and connect to the same network as my PC. In this case you will need a keyboard. Ok so now back to the PC. I go to my computer and I type double backlash and type RetroPie like this. That will go to the root folder of the Raspberry Pi. Now here we have to go into the RAMs folder. Copy the Mortal Kombat.n64 file and paste this to the N64 folder. Now we go back to the Raspberry Pi. Press select, go to quit and restart the emulator. And there you go. I have the Nintendo 64 game installed and now you could play it. Do the same for any other game but make sure you copy the ROM file into the specific folder of the console, maybe for Atari, Nintendo, Game Boy or any other, select the correct folder. Now that the console is working, all I have to do is to get a proper case. Since it's 1st of April, the best case for this project was nothing more than a microwave metal case. Now depends on you on how your case will be, but mine is like this. I first took out all the electronics inside of this microwave that doesn't work anymore. You can get this huge transformer, that I will use for a future project. Also this huge capacitor, an AC fan and an AC motor, some switches and the microwave tube. Ok so now I have the case. First I remove the metal grid from the door part. Then I make this support with plywood. I glue that inside of the door and also glue the LCD screen in place as you can see. Then I install the speakers inside on these holes, inside of the wall of the microwave. Then I place the 5V power supply, the audio amplifier and the Raspberry Pi inside as well. Then I pass all the USB cables inside of the case. I can now close the case and power the microwave retro gaming console. So there you have it. You can play all kind of games on this platform. And remember that if you add the Linux SD card, you can navigate on the internet, play Minecraft and more. You find all that you need below, the RetroPie links, the schematic and more photos on electronoops.com. I hope that you like this project. If so, don't forget to click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. If you have any question about this video or any other, just leave it in the comment section below or my Q&A page. Also don't forget to subscribe and watch all of my other great tutorials. And remember, if you consider helping my projects, check my Patreon page as well. So thanks again and see you later guys.